Yeah. Um, more than anything, it just felt great to get on the practice field. Um, just talking to the team right now as, as we broke it down. You, you could see, especially at the end, um, guys had great energy. But you, that moment happened where you, where you realize you're just present, you know, and just the thing that I think we've missed for so long where you just, you just get lost playing the game. Um, and I think there was a real sense that, that today was not promised to us, you know, and, and just a real appreciation for all of us to be out there and, and have the opportunity to, to, you know, sort of immerse ourselves in this game. Yeah, Coach, I was curious, a little housekeeping with the offensive line, um, essentially how Jared Williams has transitioned and where did you have him, left or right tackle, and then Navon Donaldson just kind of looking back on his decision, and Isaiah Walker, if there's any update and uh, maybe an idea when you might hear something from his about his waiver. Thank you. Okay, so, uh, yeah, Jared, Jared played right tackle today. Um, Navon... I, mean, I, I think the, the the issue with Navon was just because of his rehab, he wasn't going to be ready to go in August anyway. So you know, with the the redshirt rule, you know, where you still had an idea where you can play four games, and, and there's there's been talk of that rule going up to six this year because of the unusualness of, of 2020, you know, that there's a way we could still, you know, our mentality was he's not going to not play this year, but just you can get him ready and use him, um, you know, when the calendar allows. And then with Isaiah, the waiver doesn't really affect anything in terms of, you know, that's something we don't, you don't have to have the answer to that until September 11th. So um, all the paperwork and all that, we're going through all that right now. And, you know, and, and we'll, when we hear, we'll hear. Uh, man, just to follow up, your impressions of Jared Williams, just your impressions, what you've seen from him, your thoughts on him as a player. Well, certainly he stands out just, just through his size. And I mean, he's just got, he has a tremendous length. Um, so he's, he's hard to miss, you know, now obviously just today was our first time and, and we were, you know, just in helmets. So, you know, we'll learn more when, when the pads come on Sunday, I suppose, but, but, uh, but, you know, just length, you, you, you got to take an extra step to get around him, you know, because he's got such great reach. So I think that, that, that definitely provides value. Have you, have you had discussions with anybody else, you know, other than Greg Rousseau about that, about possibly opting out and, uh, you know, that maybe someone else still might make that decision. As far as you know. Yeah, I mean, no, I don't, you know, look, I mean, it, it's 2020 and everything is fluid in this in this year. But, you know, we certainly we've talked with all of our guys, you know, uh, not just the ones that, you know, are in Greg's situation, just all of our players, you know. And um, but like I said, we're just, we're, we're and I, I talking to my coaches today, I mean, we're, we, we, we need to carry on this conversation every day, not just in terms of just the opt out, but just, you know, but just making sure we, you know, we understand where their hearts are. And I, I just want one other follow about um, how, you know, how important was it, how valuable was it that Zach McLeod, you know, returned this year and how strange was it without, you know, Shaq and uh, Pinkney there? Yeah, there's definitely, it's definitely, you know, a little bit peculiar, but, um, but I know Zach, provides great value for not just our defense, but our football team, you know, it, it helps when, you, you know, your best players are also your best people. And, um, you know, I think Zach's a guy that's got the respect of everybody in our locker room. So, um, you know, he, he's one that you want the young ones to emulate, you know, how do, how do I work? How do I, you know, what do I do in the weight room? How do I practice? You know, what, what should my habits be? Cause he's, he's a great one for the young ones to learn, learn from. So you guys, I remember you mentioned in the spring how you guys were sort of game planning ahead uh, already because you had all that free time. And I was wondering, once Clemson and some of these other new opponents got on the schedule, were you able to do any of that? Or were you guys just more focused on what was going on the field already at that point? Have you well, started with, 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 with Clemson, for example, we, we had actually already game planned for them. Okay. Um, because when – I forget what week it was. <laughs> it all runs together. But but whenever when it, there, there had started to become some whispers that obviously we'd go to a, a conference only scheduled sometime in the summer. Uh, so when that happened, we started looking at some different opponents. You know, we'd watch Clemson, we'd watch Notre Dame. Um, we had some, of course, familiarity with Louisville because of playing them a year ago. But our offensive staff wasn't you know wasn't here. So um, yeah, we we had already taken some steps to to do all that. And I guess just as a quick follow, did you did you find it sort of helpful at all to get a, 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 this kind of a head start that far ahead, or do you think in the end you're going to just be paying attention once the season starts to, to what what's happening there? Well, both. I mean, I mean, it's always nice to have a, the, the teams you don't play year in and year out. It's always nice to have a little bit of familiarity so that when you get to that that week, um, 
and you know obviously you break down what they're doing in that given year you can say oh they're very similar a year ago oh they've kind of morphed into this they're running this this play more often so you can at least tell the the story chronologically of where they were and and, and where they are now um so wanted to ask you i guess you guys normally have a, a better sense for how to start the fall off depth chart wise whether it's a long series of off-season conditioning and stuff they do in the weight room or coming off spring ball. You didn't really have a normal sense of that. So can you give us a sense for how you determined the first team depth chart, second depth chart that you lined up with today? Yeah, I mean, you still have some feedback in the weight room um, in terms of how the guys did in the summer here of the last few weeks. And, and even just in the walkthroughs, just, you know, you're not, you're not going full speed, but you definitely have some assignments and you can find out who knows what they're doing and, and who doesn't know what they're doing. But, but, you know, we, we went into this, camp not thinking we have much of a depth chart at all you know we want this to be a real you know great competition um you know guys that can move up and move down you know daily um and no one that feels very comfortable about their place on our football team um about ed reed uh just you know with the with the chief of staff duties uh obviously he he started during a weird time this off season just wanted to ask you you know what how involved has he been able to be during this time and uh you know can you highlight how maybe he's made an impact if he has been involved etc well where, he, where he's been invaluable has been in recruiting you know I, you know obviously when when we hired him i don't think you know we, we weren't aware that we'd go into a shelter in place for as long as we did but but because we all became recruiters on on the phone um it's not even just the name ed reed when he talks to these young men it's, it's just it's the it, it's who he is and his personality and it's just a great great resource for them and and it, it would be hard to um mention our you know our progress in recruiting without without giving Ed some credit as well so first of all you mentioned before you know today wasn't no one today wasn't given for every everything we've gone through. so with in light of that what did you did you see i don't know was it was it relief was it joy was it yeah, just just to get out there maybe a lot of these guys never and you got never expected this day to come so how kind of a little bit more on how they were re reacted to getting onto a field and maybe the, you know to the start of well you know how many times you know in all of our aspects of all of our lives that we said you know things are just not normal anymore right and um sort of finally have some sort of normalcy you know where we're Oh, this is familiar. And I mean, there were weird things that, you know, obviously standing further apart and, you know, just different little nuances of practice with social distancing, but, but ball is still ball. And, and I, I just think the idea of just, oh man, this feels like what I'm used to. And, and there've been so few things in this calendar year um, that you've been able to say that. So I, I think that was the, the general sense that everyone had. Hey Manny, uh, just kind of following up on the Greg Russo decision from yesterday. It seems like you know, the overwhelming reaction from the team has, has been positive. I'm curious what you've seen from, I guess, specifically the defensive end groups. Obviously, Quincy and, and Jalen and and Jafari knew they were going to be playing a lot this year, but but now obviously their role is is going to be expanded. What have you seen from them in the last 24 hours? Well, I don't know anyone on the planet that doesn't like Greg Russo. I mean, you just you can't not like the kid. So I think everybody's really happy for him. They're, they're brothers, but. Um, but yeah, I mean, I mean, it definitely, you know, I mean, those guys were already highly motivated for the season, but now they know that their role, um, you know, really steps up. And, and so I think all those guys, I mean, I think our entire defensive line room um, is energized and very excited about, uh, you know, about the, the new state of affairs.